Chris and Brandon sitting here at the Kabuki Strength Lab with uh, John and Jordan of Squats and Science with the very first production Squats and Science open source velocity based device. And you may be asking, why are these guys here at the Kabuki Strength Lab with the first device? And the reason is a uh, shared vision. Uh, we've been in discussion uh, for, for quite a while now, and, uh, and both of us, uh, Kabuki Strength and Squats and Science, have this shared vision that we believe that um, velocity-based training, as it becomes more economical for the masses, that it's going to really revolutionize uh, how auto-regulation is done in the strength training world. And obviously at Kabuki Strength, you guys know this has been an integral part of my own training, uh, Brandon's training, this is what we use with our clientele. Um, we've had a profound impact from using it and it's something that we truly believe in. Um, and uh, so the problem is there's not any low cost, high quality units on the market. So all the tethered units that have the high, the high accuracy are very expensive. And so it's, it's not really something that somebody can use on, a, on an individual basis. So um, with that, um, I guess you guys uh, want to tell me a little bit about uh, why you got started and where we're at here with uh, this first unit that uh, is actually mine. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're glad to give it to you. Very first unit. So yeah, we, we started this quite a while ago um, because we were frustrated with the availability of these devices. We knew we wanted to do this training. This training has been available to top athletes for, for a long time, um, but we just didn't want to spend thousands of dollars to have access to it, and others as well. So we knew we could make it. Uh, we have an engineering background in mechatronics, and so we knew we could build a device, and we knew it was actually pretty easy to cheap and cheap to make. Um, so we did. We started off with open barbell um, version point. Two, three, right? 3D printed. It was small and fragile. Mm -hmm. You could make it yourself for I think it was like 30 bucks. Um, and then we advanced it from there. And, and the whole goal was to just lower the barrier to entry for devices like this. We want people to use this type of training because it's you know it's an optimal type of training and it and it gets really good results. Um, and so we made this, and, and hopefully people can can now benefit from velocity-based training. Yeah, I mean I can tell you my training. You, you, you asked me this question just a little bit ago. Um, you know, would I be as strong as I am today with, without using that, that device? And uh, without using those methodologies, I can tell you that, that I wouldn't be where I'm at today with how we've implemented those. And uh, there's, there's a lot to it. I mean, um, Brandon, you were, you were discussing that a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, I think John Bros said it best is, you know, your body lies to you. You know, so, so having a reliable, objective form of autoregulation uh, will prove to be an, an incredibly powerful tool in uh, choosing training loads and you know turning off those inhibitions that would otherwise uh, maybe prevent you from training harder or uh, whatever have you. Yeah. Certainly. So um, we're you know you, you, now we've got this device and you guys are putting these up for sale on uh, on squatsandscience.com. Squats and Science. Yep. And uh, we're hoping to be partnering with you guys. So the reason that uh, you guys are sitting here today is uh, we invested in, in you guys um, and hoping to get that first production run off the ground because we're switching over all of our clientele uh, as they onboard to, to this device. This will be what our online clients get uh, as they come on board with us. And uh, we hope to continue this partnership and hope that we'll be selling these uh, uh, through, through our site as well. Um, but uh, we're really, really proud to be able to uh, be part of of uh, the process of uh, getting this first production run and being able to get these to market for people. I'm sure that they're going to probably sell out uh, quite quickly as the anticipation, right? We hope so. <laughs> and, and we also want to say thank you because, um, you know, you came to us really early on and I think you saw one of our early prototypes and you, you kind of understood what the goal was. And you guys were able to give us kind of the spark we needed to get a kind of a, a media manufacturer run going so we can sell these to people. And so, yeah, thanks to, to both you guys for, for helping get this thing off the ground. Yeah, everyone who gets one really has to thank as well. <laughs> well, uh, like I said, we're just glad to be part of it, and we hope to uh, continue to be part of uh, bringing this to market because it's something that we're, we're really behind is, you know, bringing the science and evidence-based approach to, to training and uh, pushing that out there and, and uh, being smart and methodical. So, um, 
Brandon, you got any questions for you know but them about uh, uh, application use of this product here? So I think um, when we were talking about this a little bit is um, is uh, as these units become more available, the research is going to you know mm -hmm. accelerate itself. Um, so I know you do some coaching. Um, uh, in person, uh, what, what, what have you found uh, in using these devices in your own training or coaching of clients? Sure, yeah. So I, I use this all the way up um, to get me ready for IPF Worlds in South Africa. And um, what it does is, especially if you're cutting weight, as I'm sure you guys know, um, your body lies to you. And so if you, you know, use an RPE scale for autoregulation, um, sometimes things feel harder than they actually are. I've found that my velocities tend to be really consistent even through cutting weight, especially if I cut weight slowly. Um, you know, going from, you know, I, I didn't cut great weight like Chris does, but 175 to 163. I'll do that, uh, you know, most of it over the course of a, uh, of a, a month for a two-hour weigh-in, and then, you know, drop five pounds or so the day before. And uh, I, I noticed that over the course of a month, if I drop that first part slowly, my velocity is pretty consistent, even though things feel considerably worse. Yeah. Um, and obviously that changes if you're doing a 24 hour weigh and if you're doing a bigger weight cut. Um, but just that alone, uh, the consistency of knowing um, what the bar speed is rather than just relying on how it feels is, is a huge benefit. Right. What, what, it, what it actually is versus what you think it is, is mm -hmm. and, and differentiating between those two um, factors. And we, we're also talking about, you know, blending subjective and objective systems. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that has a huge potential in the future to really mm -hmm. um, maximize the overall structured training plan because, you know, auto regulation is one part of a bigger scope of training, right? So, so, so using those two um, can take a lot of the um, maybe unknowns out of the way um, for future training. Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing that uh, a lot of people watching this video may not be aware, so there's a lot of people that have been following your build of these and they're, or they're anticipating placing orders for them. Um, but uh, for those viewers that aren't familiar with the product, can you walk through some of the features like how Certainly. you look to the bar, what it's reporting, what the future capabilities are because I know it's going to have Bluetooth capabilities. You just, let's, let's talk us through a little bit about what we've got going on here. Certainly. So. Uh... To start, if you guys haven't been following the build log, this is built by Jordan and I, small batch production, all handmade. If you look inside, you'll probably see some of our fingerprints, <laughs> as Jordan was saying before. <laughs> but yeah, it works just like any other tethered device. There's actually going to be, you mind if I use your hand? Sure. So there's going to be a little clip here that will wrap around the bar. And then as the bar moves around, you'll be able to see your velocity measurement here. So there's a really slow, that's 0.22 meters a second. We got 1.43 meters per second. And after right. you're done. You can keep it on the bar. So. Certainly. After you're done, you can, you can actually you know scroll through your previous reps. Right now we store up to 500 reps if you're feeling that ambitious. And uh, yeah. Excellent. Let's see what your results are. So this unit looks awesome right Thank you. It, it just aesthetically yeah. is very pleasing but the the quality is obviously very high and we, we were talking about even even the the gym wear unit that we were using we, we talked about issues with the string and whatnot and and I think you guys actually told us that the string was made out of some Kevlar right material mm -hmm. yeah this is a durable Kevlar we've tested this for months like probably thousands of reps um, and, and so it's a really strong string right. um, and if if it does break which we really don't think is gonna happen for quite a while um, you can disassemble the entire device, and we'll have tutorials on how to put it back together if you need to. So yeah, that's been on the other units uh, on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the ba basically the failure point that we've seen mm -hmm. is just the string, which again you've had a very nice upgrade there. Also, a nice feature. So a lot of them come with a, uh, a Velcro, and you're limited in size. So then, one, this is you can put it over the the sleeve, the collar, mm -hmm. whatever you whatever piece that you want. You can wrap it around the plates if you want to. It, it, exa exactly, exactly. Uh, the magnetic base pops to a plate on the floor, mm -hmm. and you guys are talking about you could actually mount it to the rack up above, get Certainly. it completely out of the way because the weights the this unit is light enough uh, weight that the magnet will hold it. So, mm -hmm. um, and then now your guys. Uh, it's open source, so basically lots of people can work on developing different applications and for this, right? I mean, talk me talk me a little bit through the value of the the open source, um, you sure. know, philosophy. Yeah, so we, we wanted this thing to be open source in the beginning because um, you know we're a couple guys making this device, but there's a lot of potential here, 
And believe it or not, there's a big lifter maker community out there. And, uh, and so they want to get their hands on them and they want to play with it. And, you know, features like, you know, if you want to work on board presses or something, you know, let's say you want to increase the velocity at some range of your lift. Well, maybe you want to analyze that specific range of your lift over time and see if your prescribed exercise actually has that impact that you're looking for, right? Things like that. Those are cool features that you don't really usually think about with, um, with string-based devices, but you can implement that yourself if you have the, uh, the desire and the capability. Um, so we want people to have that access. Uh, the firmware is totally open source. It's an Arduino microcontroller on there. Um, the app, when it is released, will also be totally open source if you want to put your own, you know, if you want to put some cool graphing um, functionality in there. Um, if you want to do some, um, some other interesting stuff that we haven't even thought about yet. Um, and if you want to do that, uh, if anybody out there wants to hack their device or hack the app, um, just go to our website, squatsandscience.com. We have a form. You can post any build that you do. You can post any source code. And we'd love to comment on you. We'll help you out, too, if we can. Certainly. And it's really a two-way street. It's really beautiful that any improvement that Jordan might make in his device that you might not have thought you wanted before, now you can access that, We're hoping that you can update the firmware or you can update the app as for your device and, and move forward with that. Yeah. So that, that's a, an important piece. You were talking about the uh, the capabilities here, too. Um, and you missed that, you know, it is coming Bluetooth capable. And in the future, you'll have a Bluetooth app to be able to collect the data. And then again, like you said, that'll all be open source, too. Correct. So, so that's a, that's an important piece to know. Right now, we've got the ability to toggle through and view those, view the, the mm -hmm. velocity on that, or see it as you're as you're lifting. So mm -hmm. certainly, excellent. Well, like I said, this is a nice looking unit, and uh, uh, definitely, as you said, I'd feel safe throwing this in my gym bag uh, without a problem. And uh, I'm quite pleased with uh, you know, it's 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 just. Looking piece. Looks good. So yeah, yeah we're excited it. to uh, to get them on the gym and start uh, start uh, putting them to use. So I want to take a look. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> We've been staring at it for a while now. <laughs> a, little, a little too long. Yeah. <laughs> we love it. Here. Pride and craftsmanship, right. Right? right? I know where you guys are coming from. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, you know it. it uh, Everyone sees you uh, if they follow your social media putting these together, right? And you've probably worked countless hours this past week in, in getting your first batch ready. Um, but it, it it's it it I mean it it feels like it it just it feels heavy. It feels like it's just really well made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, and if you've been following us before we made this device, um, you would see the three D printed version, which is a little bit more fragile, like I said before. Um, and so we wanted to when you guys came to us and asked us for you know fifty units. Uh, we wanted to be able to make something that can, you know, last for all of your lifters. And so it was kind of a challenge. And we said, what can we do, what can we, like him and I, do um, by ourselves to make a device that can, that can do that, that can live up to that task? And so we worked hard on making, you know, every improvement we can. And we think we did, did a pretty decent job of making it durable. Um, like, you know, like you said, you could throw in your gym bag. We wouldn't mind if you place it gently in your gym bag. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we would. <laughs> but, but, you know, it'll last in your gym bag. I don't know if you can drop a weight on it. I'd rather you not do that uh, out there. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's meant for that. It's meant to last. It's meant to come with you. It's not, you know, some bigger units that do this same um, string-based uh, measurement, you can't really throw them in your bag. And we wanted that capability. Mm -hmm. You know, as lifters, we want to be able to do um, stuff like that. We want to make it for us and for others. Yeah. I think it's really important that it's, you got the, You've got both the quality, but also the nice uh, use for an individual. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's built to be managed. You you could manage a team with it if you want, but some of the devices that's kind of the platform that they're meant around because it's one they're several thousand dollars or whatever. So it's like mm -hmm. clearly it's not this one guy that's going to be taking it with him as he right. trains at this gym one day and maybe another gym the other day, mm -hmm. um, and not something that he's going to leave hanging around the gym because it's not his gym. Mm -hmm. um, so, because that's that's where I see the technology being. It's something that you know somebody says, "I want to use this for my own individual training," mm -hmm. and that's that's where it's gonna, that's where you know that's how this is gonna propel, and it's got to be priced appropriately to do that. And so mm -hmm. that's where I commend you guys doing this because nobody else is making an attempt to do that, not with the quality or accuracy of what you guys are presenting. So you guys do have some validation studies uh, planned for the future too, is that not correct? We do. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, so um, we teamed up with Dr. Mike Zordos at Florida Atlantic University. He's a good friend of ours, way back from the FSC Weightlifting Club days. Um, and so he has a device right now, an older version of the device. We're going to send him one of Duffin's devices. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so he'll validate that against the best of the best. Um, he's using engineering grade uh, velocity measurement devices. And so we'll have the most accurate algorithm we can possibly get um, in this hardware. And that'll be out. Uh, he's doing a study uh, this uh, spring. And that'll pro probably be uh, pu published sometime in the fall, maybe spring of next year. Um, and that way it can be used, you know, both in the gym and in science because we've been getting a lot of attention um, from people in academia who want to use these because they can't um, afford to get 10 of these to run, you know, big uh, data collection studies um, because, it, but, you know, if you get 10 of these, it's a cost of one of a similar device. Yep. Um, and that was kind of our goal from the beginning, an order of magnitude cheaper than something similar. And that way, you know, in, in sports teams as well, I, we got a call from the, the Washington Redskins, and they said, you know, we want to get these on every rack in our gym, but, you know, even we can't afford to put that many on there. Um, so something like this can really uh, can really help. Yeah, certainly can. And that's that's how I see it. I mean, we've, we had two of the higher quality uh, tethered units in the gym at one point, and even that, when we were trying to use it, wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we went to a lower cost individual based unit, and uh, um, yeah, there's definitely it's it's there's if you're running a team sport and you're trying to run them all through one rack or one bench, mm -hmm. it's it's not going to work. I mean, yeah. anybody that's managed a team is going to tell you that that doesn't work. You're going to take it and split, you know, you're going to have three or four guys split over five five ten racks. And uh, right. yeah, that's that's the way it works. So. Yeah, and there there will be a study coming out, like you were saying, in the fall. But you know, having access right now to those measurement systems means that we can calibrate these devices to be incredibly accurate right now, both with digital um, calipers as well as this these optical tracking systems that will tell us, you know, our device versus the optical tracking system. Excellent. All right. Um, do we want to spend any time talking about uh, a little bit more on uh, velocity training methodologies? Uh, yeah, um, I mean that's that's something that we uh, that that you've been doing for quite some time now, and that that we run our um, virtual coaching clients through. But there there's a huge um, opportunity, and uh, I would even say a need for a, a, a quality objective measure to auto regulate training. Because you know even uh, one of the biggest problems with auto regulating training, as we were talking about earlier, is um, a newer lifter, you know, everything's hard for them. So they can't effectively auto-regulate their training. So even though this is, you know, uh, uh, you know, seems like something that came out of the future in terms of technology, this is something that should be used from every um, uh, qualification of lifter. So, um, it, 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 yeah, it's awesome. Well, do either of you have uh, any last uh, comments or anything before we wrap up the uh, interview? Yeah, hopefully you can check out squatscience.com, check out the build log, check out the uh, the build process. Give us any feedback. Hopefully, like Jordan was saying, people will hack on these and add some functionality and spread it with the community and you know, grow the device. Yep, keep an eye on uh, Squats and Science. Keep an eye on our website. I'm sure you're going to see some cross links uh, between the two uh, here in the, uh, the future as well. So, again, uh, really happy to be working with you, gentlemen. Glad you came out to, uh, to the facility today. And... Uh, we're excited to uh, to get to use and uh, putting your stuff to the test. Thanks, Chris. So. Thanks so much. All right. If you want to maximize your strength and the longevity of your athletic career, or just support the production of further content, click on this video to the link to our store to check out our full line of products.